With Ori and the Will of the Wisps coming out, I decided to pick up Ori and the Blind Forest, a platform adventure developed by Moon Studios and published by Microsoft Studios. Other than the beautiful art style and amazing soundtrack, it was the story that brought me into this game. It's true art. It made me nostalgic as it reminded me of a little game I used to play on the PlayStation 1. Oddworld Apes Odyssey. And we all have games that bring us back to good old times, right? Similar to all your beautiful faces, it's great to have you here. I love great stories in games. I'm giving you a quick summary of the game, after which I'm telling you the entire story of Ori in the Blind Forest, its characters, locations and the journey it will take you on. The forest of Nibel is dying. After a powerful storm sets a series of devastating events in motion, an unlikely hero must journey to find his courage and confront a dark nemesis to save his home. Ori and the Blind Forest tells the tale of a young orphan destined for heroics and explores a deeply emotional story about love and sacrifice and the hope that exists in us all. Ori's story begins on the night of the Great Storm, a powerful weather event that ripped him off the spirit tree's branches before he was born and carries him as a glowing leaf on the wind. Naru, who had been observing the storm from the forest of Nibel, sees Ori's leaf float by her and immediately investigates. Ori is born into his real form. Naru takes Ori into her embrace and acts as his adoptive mother. Ori, being a spirit guardian, a glowing white creature biologically fathered by the spirit tree, wakes up to his adoptive mother, Naru. With nearby fruit trees running low on fruit, the pair spent the day working together to build a bridge across a long stretch of water. After having at last made it to the other side at night time and enjoying the delicious fruit in the quietude of night, Ori wraps a bunch of fruit in his arms and heads back to their cave to store it for later. However, before they can make it inside, Ori sees the spirit tree from afar ablaze with light, unaware that the flood of illumination is calling for him. Naru, worried for Ori's safety, takes hold of her stunned child and hurries them inside out of harm's way. Unaware that what they witnessed would eventually lead to Nibel's ruin, Ori and Naru slowly eat their supply of fruit until only a single piece was left. Naru attempts to find more, but the slow decay of the forest means it's near impossible. After Naru insists Ori takes the last piece for himself and realizing that they would both starve without more, Ori sets out into the barren wasteland of what was once a beautiful forest and discovers untouched fruit on a high branch of a tree. After shaking it down to the ground, Ori makes their way back home, thinking back on the happier memories from before the forest turned blind. Ori eventually returns to the cave and offers Naru the fruit they have found. Naru does not answer. We 
with mules of concern for his mother or he tries to wake her but with no avail. Realizing that Nara had died of starvation in an act of selflessness for him, Ori lays down on her body, devastated by the loss. Ori decides to leave their lifelong home shortly after, with no reason to stay now that the only parent he ever knew was dead. As he journeys deeper into the decaying forest, Ori becomes very weak without food or the supporting light of the spirit tree. He trudges aimlessly forward into the withering darkness, each step growing more and more difficult, until it all becomes too much. Ori falls from exhaustion and draws one last breath. Upon his death, thousands of tiny white flowers grow and chase away the cloud of darkness, revealing that Ori had nearly made it to the spirit tree. Sensing that his child had fallen, the spirit tree uses the last of his strength and light to revive Ori. After being revived, Ori travels through the sunken glades and encounters a mysterious light. They find out that this light is Sane, the eyes and source of the spirit tree's light. Sain becomes Ori's guide and support from that point onward and the pair of them travel to the spirit tree himself. It is here that Ori learns why Nibo began to decay. During the light ceremony that was intended to call Ori back home, the spirit tree and Ori's kin were attacked by a malevolent force, Kuro. She stole sign from the spirit tree's branches and disrupted the balance of the three elements of light, throwing Nibo into chaos. Sign tells Ori that the spirit tree's light is now inside him and that the fate of the forest now rests on his shoulders. Hearing about how he must travel to the Jinso tree, forlorn ruins and Mount Ori in order to restore the elements, Ori travels forward with the determination to save his home. During the journey to restore the elements of water, Ori encounters Gumo, a member of the Gumon race, long-limbed, dark-colored creatures who had become corrupted by Nibel's decay. Underneath the Blackroot burrows, Ori discovers Lost Grove, the place Naru grew up. Discovering memories, Ori finds out Naru's father, his adoptive grandfather. Sign explains how Naru and her father lived long before the blinding of the forest, back when the spirit tree was only a sprout. Naru herself was quick to make friends with the spirit guardians Aki and Sol in her youth, playing games with them. Naru's father, however, did not approve of this friendship, thinking that exposing his child to the light when they were part of the dark was dangerous. So he separated them. Don't 
One day, when a now adult Naru came back to their home after gathering food, she was shocked to see her father unresponsive on the ground. Realizing he had passed away, Naru mourned her loss and left her home, never to return. Returning to the Blackwood burrows, Ori initially had to contend with Gumo's traps in order to take back the water vein. Ori frees Gumo from being pinned down by large rocks, an act of kindness that eventually brings the Gumon back to the light. Using the water vein, Ori frees the corrupted heart of the Jinso tree and escapes its flooding. After restoring the element of water, Ori encounters Kuro for the first time and is nearly sent to his second death, being flung from the heights of the Jinso tree. Gumo repays Ori's kindness with some of his own and saves the spirit, leaving them to see the waters restored. Ori and Sign travel into the Misty Woods in order to unlock the Forlorn Ruin. After having bound the Gumon seal, he enters the ruins to find them frozen over in a terrible cold. The Gumon who lived there all perished in the freeze, leaving Gumo as the sole survivor of his race. After reaching the heart of the ruins and vowing to restore the elements of winds in memory of the Gumon, Gumo overhears Ori's intentions and decides to repay them by taking the light vessel back to Ori's home. After escaping the ruins, Ori and Sain find themselves in Kura's nest and discover the true reason why she attacked the spirit tree.
the light ceremony had accidentally killed three of her hatchlings from its intensity, leaving only one egg, and causing Kuro to attack in her rage. Kuro herself then appears, forcing Ori to die from her nest and flee. With only the element of worm to rekindle, Ori and Sine set out to reach Sorrow Pass and then eventually Mount Horu. At the same time as Ori finding the sunstone needed to enter the mountain, Gumo arrives back at Ori's home with the light vessel and discovers Naru's body. With Ori's kindness and forgiveness inspiring him, Gumo uses the vessel's light to revive Naru. Together the pair of them travel to the mountain at the same time that Ori enters its depths. Through skill and courage, Ori manages to beat the mountain trials and finally rekindles the element of warmth. Before they have a chance to celebrate, however, Kuro appears and forces Ori to escape the rising fires. Though nearly making it back to the spirit tree to restore Nibu, Kuro knocks Ori unconscious just as Naru makes her way through the burning forest. As Naru finds him, she cradles Ori in her arms. Kuro watches and realizes that she has become the monster she saw the spirit tree as, killing the children of others. Seeing what she had done and also finding her egg on the edge of burning, Kuro sacrifices herself, returning Sign to the spirit tree and dying from the light. The spirit tree returned balance to Nibel. As Naro and Gumo watch from afar with Kuro's unborn chick in their care, Ori stays with the spirit tree and watches their fellow spirit guardians fall and be born from the tree's branches.